And we start tonight with the Kangaroos. Are they rock bottom, Caro? A, a devastating hit yesterday when they've lost another game. One of the last 27, the wrong one that they won, with Harley Reid, of course, biting them. And now seemingly no path out of this malaise that they're in. Look, unfortunately, the Kangaroos are not only hurting themselves, they're hurting the competition because they're skewing the results, aren't they, really? And it, it all changed after they played the other winless team in Hawthorne. And I think Alistair Clarkson forecast that when he spoke about it before the game last week. He did. There's not really an easy way out of this for the Kangaroos now. It's, it's unlikely that they're going to get a priority pick at the end of the year. Well, it's still the door's still ajar. And... And their senior players yesterday, the two oldest didn't play. Where, they, where do they go? Well, they're in trouble, Hutchie and Caro. And, and you've spoken about Alistair Clarkson and I guess the, the wage that he commands. Is, is he well enough supported around him because of the money he takes up in the soft cap? Look, I think, um, and, and you have cast doubt on whether Alistair Clark has lost his magic. We don't know the answer to that yet, but at the moment it's not looking that great. Because he's earning so much money, because of soft cap issues, obviously Todd Viney, a man of great experience and a great mate and support to Alistair is there, but it's a pretty in, relatively inexperienced senior coaching team, senior assistant coaching team around the coach. We know that North Melbourne threw everything at Alistair Clarkson. They didn't have the funds to pay a strong team around him. They went all in oh, on the, the full-time to that team. There's, coach. Some, there's some talent among that team. And but probably they... they'll end up being talented, yeah. but not at the moment, Craig. There are much stronger assistant coaching teams in it's... pretty much every club across the competition. It's just an uncomfortably long road from here. Like You, you don't see it turning in a week, a month, or even a, necessarily a year. Particularly and, when you've yeah. gone chips in on one man. Well, That's... you have. And he, and he spoke pre-game, and, and he forecast that they were coming up against a team in a similar position as, as you referenced before. So here he is speaking on Friday and then post-game with where he thought, thought that they lost the game. We're playing against some um, some sides that will give us a better indication where we're at. One of those sides is, is Hawthorne Oo, so 0 and 5. This probably represents our first chance to play against a like-minded side in terms of you know age profile um, experience. Their capacity to score from stoppage actually really hurt us through that period of the game. and. Um, yeah, that's a that's an aspect of the game where um, you know, scoring hasn't been significant from stoppage for most sides this year, and uh, in that in that period of the game, um, that was their strongest score source, and um, yeah, that was that was just a reflection of their uh, their greater hunger and hunt. So this is where I ask, does he still have it? Just because you're a great coach once, are you going to be a great coach forever? And his record at Hawthorne at the end wasn't spectacular and it certainly hasn't changed at North Melbourne. He's focusing on the wrong things. It wasn't stoppage scores. It was a lack of pressure. And we could have shown, I reckon, 20 clips. So this is a held-up ball. Ginnivan has taken a mark outside 50. Look at the numbers here. Charles drifting back. He's the one that marks this ball. Now, is that stoppage score or is that a lack of any sort of defensive system or effort? Do the players actually know what they're doing. That is basic 101 defending. Uh, have a look at Davies Uniac here and, and he's a big problem. Not in their leadership group, he's their best player. Just look, hands on hips, no direction, only worrying about himself, trying to recover. He's not turning his head, he's not trying to see if there's a free Hawthorne player. Does nothing there. The effort going back is poor. Now fortunately for him, it doesn't cost him the score. Ball goes back out. I'm watching Davies Uniac. Okay, has anything changed here? Let's look at his body language. Is he turning around? Is there any intensity with his effort? Does he try and tackle there? Does he try and chase? No, he doesn't. So, Clarko, it's not stoppage scores. Your players rarely try. And that, that, that is a strong accusation. Re rarely I've try. I've sat here. Well, Hutchie, That's extraordinary. They get smashed by a team that hadn't won a game, a team that is as young as them, a team that has a coach that he should be fired up to coach again. And I could have shown you the way that Hawthorne moved that ball with any lack of pressure coming on. Their tackle numbers, their pressure rating was so low for essentially what was That's their grand That's a generalisation of, of 22 players. That they rarely try. No, well, we'll rarely try consistently is probably the way that I should have phrased it. There, of course, there's patches in games where they try, but consistently over four quarters, can you point to a North Melbourne game where they've been all in for four quarters and given their absolute maximum effort? I Ma can't. Matthew, do you think the coach's psyche was hurt by what happened, first of all, when he joined North Melbourne and then had to step away from the game for that a lot of that pre-season, came back in December and then, of course, had, a, a, a I guess, a, a mental collapse and was unable able to coach there's no doubt it pretty much help. half the season. Yeah, there's no doubt it wouldn't have helped Caro with that. Uh, you know, when they needed their coach to step in and run and drive the pre-season, they win the first couple of games, all look good, and then Brett Ratton has to take over. But they've copped it from all angles in the last 24 hours. Here's Damien Barrett and also David King speaking about the culture at North Melbourne. 
um, <laughs> we've got a fair bit of work to do. You know, but as I, I said on, on Friday, I know, know what the narrative's going to be, you know, but knew that 18 months ago, two years ago, when we, we took on the job, we needed to you know, change the, the culture and environment of our, of our footy club and invest in youth. It's the only way that we can go. You talk about culture. A culture only changes when you start to, A, be competitive and, B, win. There is an element of faith that the club has put in him, but I don't have it anymore in him. I don't think, to your point, Lordo, there is a system. I think there's just words coming out of Alistair's mouth. They are as big a mess as they have been at any stage of the post-Brad Scott era, which included some disasters under Rhys Shaw and David I mean, Noble. And the Kangaroos fans have had enough. Yeah, this has just been rolling on and rolling on for too long now. If it's, if it's going to take four years to work out the defensive system, well, maybe you're not the man. Yeah, so that's what Kane's talking about. The defensive system is so poor. And I, and I think when you talk about culture, they need to learn how to win. And they don't know how to win. Look at these numbers. These kids are tortured. They're ugly. They're tortured. Yeah. And I don't look at them. I look at the senior players at this club and... And, and it starts at the top, and, and you learn more from your senior players than you learn from the coach, in my opinion. This is their two captains who are both out of form. Luke McDonald had 10 possessions on the weekend. Josh Simpkin can't even get in the worst side in the comps midfield. And then you've got Zerha, who's probably got one foot out the door with 11 touches. Fisher, who they bought to the club, 14. Core, who they bought to the club, 14. So if you've not got senior heads... And they, I'm not sure where I, you I take issue with Damien there, though. I think they've got a better president now than they had previously. I think they've got a better CEO than they had previously, but they're both inexperienced. We know Sonia Hood is struggling. She was struggling with some really horrible abuse on social media, which came about largely because North were struggling, but then it became personal and sexist towards her and brutal. But I do think that those two... The, the, the mistake... Maybe we'll look back and go, the mistake they made was going chips in on Alistair Clarkson at a time when Adam Kingsley was available. Obviously, they weren't going to go back to Brad Scott, but Essendon looked at Alistair, went for Brad. GWS looked at Alistair, went for Adam. I think maybe that is probably, you'll look back and say, they had too much faith in the wrong man, but they couldn't have known what was going to happen after they employed him. No doubt that it's an all-of-club approach. Like, their recruiting you can point to as well. Have they drafted the right players and have they recruited have the they right players? Have they got a winner here? In? Can you point to one I point? can't really point to a winner there, and, and you've got to stop paying C grade one players no. big yep. money no. just to get to the footy club. Now, the only reason these players go there is because they get ridiculous offers of a long-term nature to go and join them. So, Core's the same, Logue's the same. I mean, Dylan Stevens and Zach Fisher, are they anything to get excited about? No, they're not. So, they must stop with recruiting C grade players just because they are, are available and you're paying them big money to say yes. In terms of footy management, the Jeff Walsh Review did one of the things he recommended was that Daniel McPherson should keep his job. Maybe he'd been elevated too quickly, but he was a good football man and a good eye for football, etc. Now, he's now running the Essendon football program. So, Alistair didn't want Daniel McPherson there because he wasn't part of what he wanted to do going forward. So maybe that was a poor decision as well. A couple more on the ruse and then we'll move on. You've been calling for Sheasel to move mid or forward. Alistair Clarkson was asked about that on the weekend. We want Sheasel in other spots on the ground, but it, um, it's just the balance of the balance of the side. It's just like who do you take to half back to replace him? We'll probably explore that. We we really wanted to, for him to try to consolidate his position at half back in the first half of the year, and then see in the second half of the year whether that was more midfield or or midfield uh, mid forward opportunities. And um, we just might have to fast track that a little bit now. And three others for me, very quickly. Uh, Thomas has hurt them, not playing, and he won't play there again. Obviously, he's been sacked and will find another home next year, you would assume. It would be, I think, in reasonable to try and find a way for the competition to offset that loss. I do. I think it's... If, if you're looking for ways to help them or pop what them a, up... What, in the mid-season draft? Well, mid-season, post -season. what's he worth, a player like that? You know, Second-round pick and... No, oh, no, crap. They pick. could have traded him last year, actually. We've got something <laughs> for him. Um, yeah. I know, but I, I think they do need continuing help. Clutching it. And you've got to look there. at ways that, 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 that do That shows it. me how um, low they must have sunk because going to that one. Zerha, they don't... He's superfluous, in my view, to their needs. And that, that if he takes a restricted free agency offer, they should... Let him go. Let him go. And then... Uh, with Larky from outside, if you're a rival club, do you go back? I mean, there's no harm in it. He, he, he touted so many offers, stayed and drank the Kool-Aid and believed the dream. Did you hear him this week? He can't be leaving. No, he's, he's all in. But if you're another club, I don't see the harm well, in having another problem. game. that's the problem. We touched on yep. this last week. You know, players like Curtis and Luke Davies, Uniac, and actually keeping this group together. Now, they've done a pretty yep. good job at that. But that's going to be a challenge ongoing. Well, well done to the genius, by the way. It was a good win by the Hawks. It was a very good win. <laughs>